Hey guys, Drifter here. Welcome to World War II In-Depth. In today's episode, we're going to be covering the M1941 Johnson Rifle, which is an assault rifle in Call of Duty World War II, and in my opinion, a criminally underrated multiplayer weapon. It's excellent, it's one of my favorites, so I'm going to end up recommending it. Though it isn't perfect, it has quite a few flaws. And you might have said to yourself, Drifter, why did you write the M1941 Johnson instead of just the M1941, as it's called in-game? Well, in real life, the M1941 Johnson was a competitor to the M1 Garand, it was supposed to be the standard issue rifle for US troops in Europe. However, it had some flaws that prevented it from being used such as high recoil, frequent jamming, unreliability, and if you use the bayonet on it, it would jam the gun. If you handle this gun rough, it would jam. To think that it jams more than the M1 Garand is just crazy to me, but let's talk about the gun in multiplayer. It'll deal 30 damage up close and decrease down to 22 at a distance, which makes it a 4 to 5 shot kill assault rifle, which is pretty normal for assault rifles in this game. The headshot damage is 1.1x, so there is no difference in shots to kill and headshots at any range. If you want to go for headshot challenges with this weapon, I highly recommend high caliber, and for general usage outside of high caliber, I always recommend body shots. This gun does have something very cool about it, which its four shot kill range is 25 meters, and the advanced rifling four shot kill range is a colossal 50 meters. It'll four shot people up to a very impressive range, and as an example of that, this this is the four shot kill range with advanced rifling. That's all the way across Gustav Cannon as far as I could possibly go. Should you choose to run advanced rifling, you can do some pretty hilarious things, though I don't think it's really optimal for the M1941 Johnson because, as we'll discuss later, it's more of an up close rifle. Its true strength, what makes this gun awesome, is its rate of fire is 800 rounds per minute. With rapid fire, that'll go up to about 860 rounds per minute, and it has the best in class rate of fire for any assault rifle in all of Call of Duty World War II. Because it has average damage, surprising range, and really high rate of fire, the close and medium range time to kill is very fast if you can land your shots. It easily competes with the bar, though does not eclipse it, and outclasses just about everything else unless somebody gets lucky and two taps you with an M1 Garand. To compare to some machine guns, the M1941 will outperform the PPSH and the Type 100 under 25 meters. Under 25 meters, it roughly goes even with the grease gun and the MP40. Those guns are technically slightly better, but only by just a smidgen of milliseconds in time to kill. It's basically on even footing. And theoretically, at long range, the time to kill is very good too, if you can hit four shots in a row, but it's limited by the high recoil of the weapon. In practice, you're not gonna be getting a lot of four shots to kill at those ranges. Iron sights on this weapon are good enough to use for close range. Up close, I have no issues whatsoever using them. And of note, some variants have significantly better iron sights. I have not been able to find out exactly what variants because I don't have them unlocked and some of them are supply drop specific, but some of the variants do have much better iron sights than the defaults. Hipfire spread is tighter than any other full auto assault rifle in World War II. All of the full auto assault rifles were recently nerfed to have worse hipfire spread, except for the M1941, which therefore makes it yet again a great choice for a close quarters combat assault rifle. Unfortunately, the real weakness of this gun is that its recoil is very high, or at least it's high in terms of Call of Duty World War II recoil. In other games, it would be considered moderate recoil for assault rifles, but there's quite a few laser beams here because they're historically low rate of fire weapons, so it's high for this game. More than being moderate to high, the problem with it is the recoil is also not predictable and it's hard to master for long range. There's not really a super clear pattern for this weapon. It kicks up and it can drift to either side one way or the other. The amount that it kicks up and the amount of drift will vary from spray to spray, so it's not super easy to use outside of bursting or just close range spraying where your recoil doesn't matter very much. You're not going to be able to reliably four shot people at long ranges with this weapon happen which is probably a good thing because it would be wildly unfair otherwise. The M1941 oddly has no idle sway, meaning that it is the only fully automatic assault rifle in World War II to have none. The STG, the BAR, and the FG42 all have idle sway, some of them a very significant amount which can make them difficult to use, but the M1941 has none, which is a good thing because I don't like fooling with that. Magazine size is 25 and with extended mags it's 37. Normally I would say 20 
25 rounds in the mag is not very good, but given that there's a lot of small magazine size assault rifles in World War II, that's going to be better than average, though extended mags takes it up to 37, which is very, very nice. A true godsend. Reload time also leaves much to be desired at 1.75 seconds. You're going to be reloading a lot because this gun shoots very fast and you're going to burn half your mag every time you sit down to kill somebody unless they're sitting still and you get the opportunity to just pop them four times because they're not paying attention to you. Extended mags is your friend. Also, the huge magazine that goes all the way across your screen looks hilarious to me. It's more dinner plate than the dinner plate gun. It just and it amuses me to see this gigantic mag sticking out of the side of your Johnson rifle. You're going to want to run Hustle or Extended Mags, one or the other. Then this is one of the few guns where I think you could definitely benefit from both, being that you're going to be up close and you never want to run out of ammo. But when it comes right down to it, I prefer the Extended Mags. You will also either want Steady Aim or the Infantry Division for an up-close boost. The gun, the gun is great up close, just like the bar. However, if you find yourself low on ammo or somebody's just too close to your face, the Steady Aim will allow you to spray this gun very accurately and fire faster than most of the SMGs in the game, or the infantry division will allow you to just stab people in the face. You could run either one, that's fine by me, but do keep in mind that since the whole design of the Johnson rifle is to get close to people and spray them really hard, you're going to want something up close and personal that's nice. My recommended setup for public matches is Hustle, Steady Aim, Extended Mags, and Foregrip. I don't think that Primed is necessary for this weapon or really any of the other ones. Hustle is my friend, Steady Aim is my friend, Extended Mags is also my friend, and Foregrip will help me a little Little bit with the recoil. Foregrip isn't extremely beneficial in World War II, but it does help mitigate some recoil. And this is my up close and personal and nasty assault rifle class. This is the assault rifle class that I used to murder people with on Flak Tower, on Aachen, and almost any small map, but it's definitely going to struggle at longer ranges. This class is probably going to really suck at long range, just being honest with you. And when it comes for competitive, I don't think the M1941 is good for competitive play. I think the M1941 is just too inconsistent for competitive play. I've talked to some friends of mine that are pro players. I've recommended this gun. On paper, the stats are amazing. On paper, it should be the mo best, most competitive gun in the game. But in practice, with the slow reload and the difficult recoil, it's just not consistent enough for people to really latch onto. And I wouldn't recommend it running it in comp unless you're running a very, very small map. If you just have to have an assault rifle and you have to be on a small map and competitive for whatever reason, this one's great. But generally speaking, I would step back and leave it alone. Guys, that's all for this shorter episode of In-Depth. I hope you enjoyed it. Unfortunately, the Johnson was just a very simple weapon. In the next episode, we're going to be talking about the much more complicated M1 Garand. Drifter out. If you want all the stats for World War II weapons in your pocket to go, then look no further than the World War II Ultimate Utility by Brass Monkey Apps.